With a streak of multiple extra booster sets in a row, we finally return to the main booster line of Vanguard. And this one brings a whole new storm with it. Enter Aerial Steed Liberation. Aerial Seed Liberation is the first major booster of Wave 2, as seen as the first two sets of Wave 2 were both extra boosters, the Heroic Evolution and My Glorious Justice. This means there's some extra weight on this set as it's a Wave 1st set. So let's see what Aerial Seed Liberation has to offer. Aerial Seed Liberation is the fifth booster in a main Vanguard support line with its set code being VBT05. The clans supported in this set are Royal Paladin, Oracle Think Tank, Gold Paladin, Nubatama and Narukami. So once again we've got a booster support in the Miyagi Academy card fight club characters. This is also the reason why some people refer this set as Miyagi Academy version 2. This set contains 80 different cards from which 8 are reprints and all of them are trigger reprints from 3 out of the 5 clans, excluding Gold Paladin and Nubatama. The card rarities are divided into 5 VRs, 8 triple R's, 12 double R's, 17 rares and 38 commons. So as you can see only the VR's are evenly split in this set as each clan has one VR as you would expect. However in terms of triple R's and lower this isn't as equally divided as you are coming a few cards short. So some clans had to bite the bullet because in terms of clan distribution Royal Paladin gets a total of 21 cards. Oracle Think Tank gets 22 cards, Gold Paddling gets only 5 cards, and just like Gold's, Nubatama is also left behind with only 10 cards, and it leaves Narukami with the remainder 22 cards. So Gold's and Nubas are lacking in their support, but this has to do with the fact that both clans are going to get new support in the near future. Besides the base support, we also got 20 parallel cards in this set, 5 SVRs, 12 SPs, one Secret Rare and two Cross Vanguard Rares from which one is a reprint as that is Plaster Blade reprint with the art from the new starter deck that was only released in Japan. Also an extra bonus that comes with this set are the special type 1 gift markers. You got the Vanilla Voil version, a rare colored version and a super rare Force marker in the color scheme of Blaster Blade and Blaster Dark. Both of these will only have 100 prints in circulation. Each box comes with one promo pack that randomly contains one of these markers. This set focuses on completely new playstyles for all clans as their respective VRs take their clan to an entire new strategy. The only ones that build upon their old builds are Gold Paladin and Nubatama. However, Nubatama support can also be used as a standalone build, but it lends itself to be mixed with the previous support as the new VR doesn't close games consistently on its own volition. And as you might have guessed, the unit on the cover is the new VR for Royal Paladin, Solitary Knight Gancelot. Speaking of, Royal Paladin support in this set is led by the new VR Solitary Knight Gancelot. This is an amazing card that redefines the clan and paves the way for a complete new strategy, as its skills allows you to empower your Blaster Blades to unimaginable levels, as not only do your Blaster Blades have a continuous 20k power, but they become vanguards with all the extra bonuses that comes with that status. Genslot isn't the only Blaster Blade support card in this set, as we have Knight of Truth Gordon as an amazing support grade 2 that can even act as a booster, a searcher in the likes of Knight of the Harp Tristan, and a counter charger that works with Blaster Blades in the likes of Plunk and Chanter. And of course we got Barku and Lou that support our main character the best they can. As you can see, the new Royal Paladin support line focuses on empowering your Blaster Blade and use him as an aggressor with the extra drive check and potential free crits. The Royal Paladin support in this set consists out of 22 cards, 1 VR, 2 triple R's, 3 double R's, 4 rares and 10 commons. Out of these cards we have 3 common reprints in the likes of their vanilla triggers. You might have noticed that I just said 22 cards and not 21. That's because they also got the reprint card in their cross vanguard rare slot that falls outside of the base rarity cards from this set. That is the Blaster Blade reprint. Royals get a new generic starter with Barkle and this set also gives Royal Pelon 2 vanilla types. The grade 1 interceptor and the grade 2 12k attacker. This also gives them their first crit trigger and the generic drop drop pg to replace the draw trigger pg with the first crit. And as an added bonus, Royals get a new type of finisher in the likes of Knight of Severity, Hengist. 
As you can see, Royals got a lot of support, but that's not all, as this set provides support for Alfred, Soul Saver, Blasters, of course the new Blaster Blade deck, and even some options to allow some budget builds with the likes of Hengist. With that, the card that I want to highlight for them in this set is Knight of Severity Hengist. This is an amazing card that allows Royals to have a strong finisher in any type of build, as it synergizes with all cards. It can be a great third grade free right target to swing with 5 attacks, but not only that, the second attack will have at least plus 10k on the columns, but if you call it an entire column, that's a plus 20k. Also, you're reusing your force markers while doing this, and with the added battle door skill for the remainder of the turn, can turn it into a very deadly attacker, and it might even have some premium applications with the rearguard chain combos. But this might be even better in the Soul Saver build as you can unleash this card as early as turn 3 with all the extra soul charging. And for players that like some bling, you're in luck as Royal Paladin has 3 SPs, 1 SVR, 1 Secret Rare and both Cross Vanguard Rares. So get your wallet ready because Royals is going to be expensive. But it's definitely not the only expensive clan out there. Tsukiyomi makes its grand return in standard and brings once again the concept of right chains back into Vanguard. However, this time the right chain has become way more consistent, all the more powerful and that much deadlier. She allows Oracle Think Tank to be turned from a defensive clan into a very aggressive clan. So of course the new VR for Oracle Think Tank is the main girl full moon Tsukiyomi. She allows you to stack the deck, but not only on the bottom just like her old mechanic, but now she also allows you to stack the top of the deck draw a bunch of cards and it gives a lot of power when seeing multiple triggers. That only makes this card pretty nuts, but she is accompanied by Half Moon, Crescent Moon and her trusted starter Ichibi Yoshi. And they help to get the full moon's full potential more consistently. Outside the Tsukiyomi cards, we can see cards like White Hair of Ineva and Evil Eye Princess Yurul that helps even more with consistency of the deck. And with Battle Sister Macaron and Solid Condo Wizard, they solidly established the aggressive nature of the deck. Oracle Think Tank got a total of 22 cards in this set. 1 VR, 2 Triple R, 3 Double R's, 5 rares and 11 commons, from which we have 3 reprint triggers just like Royal Paladin. Also, just like Royal Paladin, we get a starter in the likes of Godhawk Ichibyoshi and a third crit trigger with the Battle Sister name. We also got two Vanillas, the 15k Shield Grade 1 and the 12k Grade 2. However, these aren't your new Vanillas for OTT. However, they both have the Witch name, which, spelled differently, makes them pretty useful for the Witch archetype. We also got a new drop draw of grade 1 PG, which happens to also be a new witch unit. Besides the general support, this set provides some good quality support for all existing and new deck types. Witches, Magus, the new Tsukiyomi, Imperial Deer and even Amaterasu get some new cards to play with. From all the new cards, there is one card that I specifically want to highlight and that is White Hair of Inaba. This card is a game changer for the clan, like most protect decks and now even royals to some extent, they have one of their more powerful plays locked behind a great free soul blasting unit. Victorious Deer, Feather Palace, Pentagon Omegas, etc, etc. Now with Inaba, this skill will be live at least a turn earlier, but also you don't have to worry about misriding in the case of Pentagon Omegas, as you can ride it as a first Vanguard, and with Inaba provide the Great Freeze in Soul if you can rewrite back into another Pentagonal. So outside the normal use of this card that allows you to cycle through your deck, but also generate Soul while doing so, which makes this card already pretty good, it can at the same time fix your finishers in terms of consistency and playability, which makes this card phenomenal. What also is phenomenal about this clan are the high rarity cards and the value behind them as OTT got 3 SPs and 1 SVR which makes it the second highest clan with the most parallel cards in this set. Also the SPs of Tsukiyomi's are pretty amazing but oh so expensive. The next land isn't as expensive as Royals or OTT, but in terms of the amount of cards you're getting for the price, they may as well be. Gold Paladin's latest support isn't the biggest in terms of card amounts, but they make it up for in card quality. Basing line Platinal Zell is an amazing new card that provides not only insane offensive, but it also enables good defense. It allows you to manipulate the top two cards of your deck while drive checking to not only drive check the cards you want, but also superior call extra cards to the field mid battle. This not only helps you get more shield to hand, but also retain more cards in hand as you superior calling from deck instead from your hand. Both new support cards help with aggression as well as more defensive options, 
Kahadin, just like Azel, superior calls from the deck, which help retain a healthy hand size. And Hoel builds great numbers, which allows you to play with Axel 2 without losing on power. And of course, a new front of crit help with more offense, as you can experiment with different trigger lineups outside the default 8 front 8 crit. But with that, we basically showcase the entire support, as Gold Paladin only got 5 new cards in this set. 1 VR, 2 Triple R's, and 2 Comets. These new cards are mainly as a support, however Kaeden and Hoel can work wonders for any type of gold Paladin build. Garmor, Pelennor, and Sacramor, if that is a thing, and even though the VR is an Ezel, it can work with any other great free lineup. It can even benefit from Pelennor's superior right, as Platinal Ezel skill is given to the player and not to the unit. So if you attain 2 great frees in your soul, you can get his effect even when you rewrite into Pelennor. Golds may only have 5 cards, but they do get 1 SVR and 2 SPs in this set, so you can fully bling the new support. So there's at least that. Now let's go to a clan with a bit more support, but still on the lower side of the spectrum. However, just like Golds, it's not nothing. Nubatama gets an amazing new ninja dragon with the introduction of Jamiya Kongo. This card forces your opponent to adapt or die before your hand destruction no jutsus, as this card limits your opponent's hand size to 6 or in some cases even to 4. That paired off with even more bound discard cards like Stealth Beast Tamahagane and a deadly Battle Door unit in the likes of Stealth Rogue of the Reckless Action Show, you have a deadly concoction that assassinates any opponent without them realizing what just happened. And with cards like Stealth in Sumuji Basho and Stealth Rogue of the Prescription Mizukaze, you can halter any kind of defensive strategy your opponent had in mind to try to survive your onslaught. Nubatama gets a total of 10 brand new cards in this set. 1 VR, 1 Triple R, 3 Double R's, 3 Rares and 2 Comets. They didn't get any of the trigger reprints or even a new crit trigger for that matters, same as for the new starter or the grade 1 drop drop PG. But they did get 2 new vanillas in the likes of a grade 1 with 2 crits and a 12k grade 2. This support focuses on Jamia Kongo, however he plus his support is very splashable in the already existing Kujikiri Kongo and Magatsu Storm builds. From the new cards, there is one card that jumps out and that is Stealth Rogue of Prescription Mizukaze. This card forces your opponent to think twice about how they want to guard as they lock themselves out of using them for a second time. That in itself is already deadly enough, but with all the nasty tricks Numatama can throw at their opponent, you can see just how deadly this thing can be. You can combine it with Jamia Kongo as they only have 4 cards to work with while working under this restriction, and combine it with Soho, you are golden. You can also go for an insane Magatsu Storm multi tag combo, but that is very late game as you need two great freeze in your soul to do this. But my favorite application for this card is in combination with Kujikiri Kongo. This guard restriction with the already built in guard restriction of Kujikiri Kongo can generate unguardable attacks even if they are only 18 to 19k power. And with all the options you can use Tsumichi Basho to screw with your opponent's tactic to guard against this unit's skill. So in general this is one of the craziest rares printed in a long time. As for the high rarity stuff, Nubatama gets 1 SVR and 2 SPs. Not that much, but what do you expect? They're ninjas that work in the shadows. They don't want to be seen. This cannot be said about the last clan in this set. Narukami, the Thunder Dragons, Master of Lightning, Dragons of the Storm, they really lift up to their name as they bring a whole new storm to Vanguard with the introduction of their new Vanguard, Eradicator Gauntlet Buster Dragon. This new card establishes the anti exile nature of the clan, but well, with that they also bring terror to any protect or force deck that isn't prepared, as they can wipe fields with ease and with the help of Supreme Army Eradicator Zuitin they can generate insane numbers while doing that. And if high numbers isn't enough, Desert Gunner Gaiben turns them into big numbers with Sentinel restrictions. And to top it all off, we have Fiendish Sword Eradicator Choho to give the clan some extra multi tech on top of all the high numbers. In this set, Narukami gets 22 new cards 1 VR, 1 Triple R, 3 Double R's, 4 Rares, and 13 Commons. From these 22 new cards, we have 2 common reprint triggers, but we also have the third critical trigger and the third front trigger. In this new support, we also get the 2 new Vanillas, the 9k grade 1 and the double crit grade 2, alongside with the drop draw grade 1 PG. 
The overall support is very generic focused, so most things work with most things. So it can combine a new VR very well with the previous VR Detonics drill. We do have some interesting pairings, as we have a specific support card for Gauntlet Buster Dragon, but also a pairing for Thunder Break Dragon, so who knows if this might be developed further into a specific deck archetype. Although most cards are generic support, there is one interesting card that has sparked my interest, and that is Turning Bass Dragon. On the surface, this is a nice mid-battle bind addition for Narakami. This way you don't have to rely on Detonic's Real Dragon to provide multi tax with Rising Phoenix. But when you look at this card further, you can see that this has some nice premium applications. None of the old Narakami stuff binds directly from the field. So thanks to this card, you get access to cards like Rising Phoenix in premium. And when you combine it with strides like Voltage, Closer Dragon and even a new Conquest Dragon, you can see what kinds of impact this card can have on the premium landscape. Now if only Narakami could get some good first tried options, then we would be in a very good position. What we did get was one new SVR and two SPs to really showcase the blinding power of the thunder and lightning. Now we get to the part where probably most of you guys have been anticipating the longest for and that's where we're gonna showcase which decks we're gonna feature on this deck spotlights in the upcoming days from this set. So you might already have guessed we're going to get five new spotlights and as soon as we have five VRs in this set you can already guess which VRs and which decks we're gonna feature. Basically, all of the VRs. So for Royal Paladin, we're gonna get the one for Cancelot. For Oracle Think Tank, we're gonna make a spotlight for Tsukiyomi. Gold Paladin is going to get the new Platinum SL. Nubatama, we're gonna talk about Jamiya Kongo. And lastly, we end up with Narukami's Gauntlet Buster Dragon. So all these VRs, all their new spotlights will be on the channel in the upcoming days. So if you're excited for any of these clans or any of these builds, then check in the channel for the upcoming days as we're going to dive right into them after tomorrow's card fight update. And that's basically everything for this set breakdown. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of this new type of video. It has been a little bit late as I usually want to do them right after I do the set reviews of each and every single clan. But the moment that I was planning to do this video, a lot of stuff happened and need to do a lot of things for work. So I had to postpone this video to today. So after this, you don't have to worry. I'm going to go right into the deck profiles or the spotlights as I've been working on them ever since I was doing the set review. So I had plenty of time to prepare them and they are basically now in the final phases of editing. But that's basically everything for me today. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of these new type of videos. And as always, I'm Mr. Time Leap. And I'll see you guys in the next one.